Hi everyone! Welcome to a new series of fun and learning here in Teacher Vival, now in its second season. I am Teacher Jordet, your study buddy in this fun and crafty Arts Friday. The rice terraces of Benguet, the parol or lantern in Pampanga, and the bulino mats in Pangasinan are just a few of the many products and pieces of evidence of arts and crafts in the Philippines. Do you like arts and crafts? Have you ever dreamed of becoming an artist or a craftsman? For today's session, we will talk about the accessories, crafts, and body ornaments of Luzon tribes. Are you ready? Let's go! As we learn about accessories, crafts, and body ornaments of Luzon tribes, we will answer these questions. First, what are the different elements and principles of art? Second, what makes the product of each community unique? And third, what are the different characteristics of arts and crafts in specific areas in Luzon? Before we proceed to the lesson, let us get to know these important terms that can help you better understand this lesson. Artisan An artisan is an artist or handicrafts maker. Aesthetic Aesthetics pertain to art or beauty. Meticulous Meticulous means putting careful attention to detail. Paraphernalia Paraphernalia are objects that are needed for a certain purpose. Indigenous Indigenous is a term that may be used to describe an object or human that naturally exists in a particular place. Craftsperson A craftsperson is a very skilled worker who makes functional objects for trade. Let's go back to the pictures we showed earlier. Can they talk? Are they saying something? While visual arts and crafts may have no words, however, they have the ability to transmit feelings, moods, and ideas through the elements and principles of art. Now, let us know more about them. The elements of art are the visual tools and stylistic features that are included in an art piece to help the artist communicate. There are seven elements of art. First is the line. The line is a path of a moving point. It is used to define the boundaries of shapes and forms. Next is shape. Shape is an area enclosed by a line. It is two-dimensional and can be geometric or organic. Geometric shapes have clear edges and perfect uniform measurements. Geometric shapes are commonly found in architecture firms and as well as other objects and tools. Organic shapes, on the other hand, usually appear irregular with their flowing and curving lines. Organic shapes are associated with things from nature. Then we have the forms. Forms are three-dimensional. They either take up space or give the impression of taking up space. Of course, color. Color is the way light reflects off a surface. It is considered as the most expressive part of art. It also adds interest and reality to artworks. We also have value. Value is the lightness and darkness of a surface. It is often referred to as shading. Value is also important in the study of colors. Then, texture. Texture is the actual surface feel or simulated appearance of roughness, smoothness, and many others. Last is space. Space is the distance around, between, above, below, and within an object. Meanwhile, the principles of art depict how the artist uses the elements of art to achieve the desired impact and to convey the artist's objective or intent. There are also seven principles of art. First one is the balance. Balance refers to the visual of the elements of the composition. It is a sense that the painting feels stable and feels right. Contrast. 
Contrast is the difference between elements of art in the composition, such that each element is made stronger in relation to the other. Emphasis Emphasis is when the artist creates an area of the composition that is visually dominant and commands the viewer's attention. Pattern Pattern is a uniform repetition of any of the elements of art or any combination thereof. Movement Movement is the result of using the elements of art such that they move the viewer's eye around and within the image. Unity and Variety this is the visually pleasing agreement among the elements in a design. This is a feeling that everything in the artwork works together or looks like it fits. Rhythm Rhythm is created by movement compiled through the repetition of elements of art in a non-uniform but organized way. The principles and elements of art can be found in all forms of art. This includes the arts and crafts that we discussed earlier. Now, let's focus on our very own artistry and craftsmanship in Luzon. Come on, let's go! The Philippines is one of the most diverse and rich cultures because of its many island provinces and foreign influences such as Spanish, Americans, Malay, and Chinese to name a few. It is a melting pot of artisan crafts like jewelries, body ornaments, accessories, and even everyday objects. First, we have the jewelry. Jewelry making in the Philippines has been a practice since the 16th century and is believed to have been influenced by the Chinese. The jewelry industry in Luzon is popular in the Cordillera region for its silver and bronze pieces. The quality and designs come in intricate forms with mostly curvy lines and geometric shapes. Recently, this personality has gone viral again in social media and in local news. Do you know her? You're right! This is Wang Od Ogai. She is a Kalinga woman who has practiced the art throughout her life and is now considered as the last mambabatok or traditional tattoo artist in the Cordillera region. She uses the ancient method of tattooing where a big thorn is connected to a wooden stick. Tattoo art is already considered popular nowadays and you can get this from many tattoo shops all over the country. However, contrary to what many believe that tattoos are influenced by foreign people we see from different forms of medium, the art of tattooing has been existent in the country long before the Spaniards came. This practice has been part of many indigenous groups whose belief is that these tattoos possess spiritual powers that ward off evil spirits. They use these tattoos to protect their warriors and headhunters of their tribe. They also use it to reward their warriors after conquest and to mark their social status in the tribe. Women in the tribe are also given tattoos for aesthetic purposes and to mark their fertility. Another famous artistry and craftsmanship in the island of Luzon is basketry or basket weaving. It is an integral part of the lives of the indigenous communities in the country. Baskets are made in different sizes and shapes depending on their needs. Woven crafts are sometimes used for storing harvest and clothes, catching fish, shells, and insects, protecting the farmers from sun or rain, and as a hunting paraphernalia. Provinces in Luzon which are famous for basketry include First, the Kalinga province with their laba. Laba is a bowl-shaped basket made from rattan. Then we have Batanes with their vakul. Vakul is a headgear used by Ivatan women for protection from the sun and rain. The last in our list, but definitely not the list, is paper cutting. This craft is also present in our country in various forms such as the parol that is seen hanging in every Filipino home during the Christmas season. The parol is a lantern shaped like a star that has elaborately cut paper as decorations in the pabalat, which are pastillas de leche or milk candy wrappers that are known to be practiced in Bulacan. And that's it for our lesson today. But wait, let's go back to our three questions earlier. First, what are the elements and principles of art? 
the elements of art are line, shape, forms, color, value, texture, and space. Meanwhile, the principles of art are balance, contrast, emphasis, pattern, movement, rhythm, and unity or variety. Second, what makes the product of each community unique? Products are manufactured using the materials found in the natural surroundings of the community. Designs are inspired by the surroundings and beliefs of the people in the community. And last, what are the different characteristics of arts and crafts in specific areas in the zone? We have the jewelry industry and tattoo art in the Cordillera region, basketry or basket weaving in Pangasinan, Kalinga, and Batanes, and paper cutting in Bulacan. What a fun and informative session we had, kids! You are really fantastic! I hope you learned a lot today about accessories, crafts, and body ornaments of Luzon tribes. Don't forget to click the thumbs up and share this video to help students like you in learning more about arts. Also, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Vival TV. Once again, this is Teacher Jordet, and see you on our next musical, Artsy, Active, and Healthy Friday.